Good morning. Buenos dias. It's early. Six o'clock in the morning. 33 degrees. Chilly 33 degrees outside. So what happened was, I don't usually get up and get out of the house by six o'clock. I usually am up, but not, not going. Annie woke up at 4.30 this morning. She had a little bit of a fever, so she's feeling bad. Got her some Tylenol, got her some juice, got her back to sleep, and then I couldn't go back to sleep. So I've just been playing on my phone for like an hour, and I was finally like, no, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna start this day. I'm not gonna waste this time laying in bed. So I'm out. I have some errands to run. First things first, hardware store. It opens at six. It's just uh, hair after six now, so should be perfect. I got some things I need to get so we can continue this go-kart build. Also, we're in the Yee Yee. Thanks guys for uh, connecting me with Granger Smith. You guys are awesome. That only happened because you guys went and blew up his Instagram, so I appreciate it. He was super cool, and we made a cool video, and I had a great day. All right, I also have some uh, plumbing work to do today. Not an innuendo, actual plumbing work. How you feeling? I went and got tacos and she still wanted to eat oatmeal. That's how you know she's sick. Here is the plumbing issue. Disposal, normal drain. The problem is you're supposed to put the disposal on like the big side. So when you clean all the dishes in the big side, the stuff goes down there. But it's always been switched and we always thought we should switch it. We just never have. So I need to get this there and this there. I think I can do it right now. Oh, wah, wah, not enough pipe to get it in there, so gonna have to work on that later. But I got things to do in the barn. Hey, Hi. how's the run? Really cold. Was it cold? Yeah. You wanna come help me work on the go-kart? Did oh. you finish the sink? Uh, no, don't turn the water on or you'll regret it. Promise. Back to the go-kart project. I wanna take this and mount it to this. Now the problem is, well, it wasn't made for that. And I'm not the best fabricator. I, uh, I can do things that work, but they're not really pretty. This is actually gonna be even hard to make it work, I think. So I need to get this to bolt to this frame. So I'm gonna weld out a piece of metal right here, I think, that'll extend out and have holes in it. So I bought some random stuff at the hardware store. They didn't have a very good metal selection. I just bought what I could find. I got a little bit of square tubing, a little bit of angle iron. First though, I think I'm gonna cut all this. Like it's got this nice like, big cage around this thing and a big heavy duty bumper, but I want to scoot this thing in closer and this is all in the way. I can get it like three or four inches closer without all this. So I'm going to cut, 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 cut. Uh, actually going to be a lot of cutting to get that three inches extra, but I think it'll be good because it was hitting all of this stuff before. I'm also going to have to move that battery box probably to that side because right here this muffler is just dumping straight into the battery. I might do the battery later. Right now I'm just gonna start cutting. I'm gonna get a little choppy choppy. This will be the coolest looking thing ever. Okay, so I got that bumper hitch out of there, so now everything scoots in a lot closer. Got the uh, battery out, because it was hitting here as well, so, and then it was also gonna hit the exhaust. So now I need to extend this frame about five inches, have a little hole in it there, so that the frame will bolt to the frame. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these springs yet. Probably build something off of, maybe just off of here. Like, this is still pretty sturdy, stocky frame there. 
Just build something to come up there, maybe. And then there's another connection point here. So this thing connects there, there, and then here, which is so, ugh, I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna replicate that on the back. And it's probably, it's not gonna be as good. <laughs> it's not gonna be as springy, but I want it to have some range of motion, I think. I think I do. I may just end up welding it all fixed later, but I'd like for it to be able to sort of go over bumps. I think that would be so cool. I just gotta extend off of this or off of this and just come down on both sides of this and it's got a little uh, spot where that bolt will go through and so it can rotate on that. The problem is, well, here's, let me show you what I got. I bought some metal, I got some angle iron, I got some square tubing and a little tiny one just in case I wanted some smaller supports. The problem is, I had a big metal cutting blade for my, my miter saw and I can't find it. I have no idea where it is. I thought it was in this barn somewhere, but I've looked through everything. It's kind of messy and I can't find it. So now I'm left with the decision, do I make these cuts with my Sawzall, which you guys saw me using earlier, which would work, it would just be a big pain in the butt, or do I go back to the hardware store again for the second time today to get a saw blade? I don't know. So I'm gonna do these two options. My Sawzall and a grinder with a cutoff wheel. Both not great options for like cutting like, you know, precision-ish, ish pieces. It's like super redneck engineering over here, but redneck engineering a lot of the time works. Maybe we'll get a little duct tape, a little bailing wire. This thing will be top notch, my man. Okay, let me show you what I did, but first of all, don't judge my welds, okay? It, I think it's gonna work, but it ain't pretty. So I have the angle iron there, and then one down low, there and there. These two pieces here going to this. We have the bolts, we have a nut there, and so now we are attached in two places on the back. Same thing here, so you can see that angle iron and that piece down there. Yeah, it's not really, Secure, secure yet? I worked for hours on this with my tools that are not ideal for the job. I just wanna go drive it now. The rear engine is not hooked up. Just the front. It's basically just pulling a trailer. I just wanna see how it pulls. Sounds good. This is definitely a little, little decreased. It's very tight on turning, but it's working and it's articulating back there as we go over these bumps. It actually reverses all right. <laughs> so that's pretty good. I'm happy. Nothing broke, and uh, there weren't any weird noises or anything. So all good. My welds held, even though I was just going super slow. But I mean. I liked watching the articulation because I kept, even while I was doing all this today, I kept thinking I should just like weld it fixed so it's all just flat. Like if this was an 18 wheeler, which it kind of looks like right now, if it was an 18 wheeler that, you know, we just had them like solid right here. So this whole thing could hinge up, but it won't hinge independently and roll over stuff. But if I could get it to do independently and roll over stuff, I'll have traction the whole time. We won't have this like back wheel sticking up over an edge and this one getting traction or vice versa. It would work, I think, better and just be cooler. And so 
We got the hinge working. I need to get these springs on it so it functions a little better. That is another day. But yeah, I think I'm going to build out something from this to these springs. So we'll have a little bit of a spring there. And then I got to figure out, I want to hook to this too, because this whole engine floats here. And so that's why I put that block there so it wouldn't bouncing. So I need to figure out some way to support that part too. And maybe also come off of this. I don't, I don't really know. No, I think I'm gonna need to come off of maybe that. I don't really know what I'm gonna do on that part. But we have a lot of a lot more tweaking and figuring out, and I'm gonna use probably some strong metal, probably the square tubing on that, just because I don't love my angle iron down there. Not the best way to secure a go-kart. Some square tubing would have made me feel a whole lot better. But we're making progress, and I'm super pumped about it. This is the dumbest, best idea I've ever had. Finished the sink with the disposal. I would show you guys, but it's literally the most boring thing we've ever showed on this channel. So I figured I'd, I'd spare you. But one thing that I do want to show you is something that someone sent to me that I think is super cool. At first, I didn't see the note that came with this and I have the attention span of a squirrel. So I didn't see what this says on here. So I just started opening this up. I thought, oh, someone sent me a like survival backpack. This is cool. And I was like, oh, there's a blanket in here. Cool. And then I was like, what is all this other stuff? There's a, there's a bunch of like weird things that make no sense for survival. And then I read the note and looked at this. If you don't fight cancer, you don't know Jack. I know Jack. Let me explain. My name is Ben Hoger. I'm 16. I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I've been watching your videos for a few years and I enjoy watching them every day. Thanks, Ben. You the man. I saw that your brother Mark has cancer. I'm very sorry for you and all your family. I know what it's like to have a brother with cancer because my older brother Jack had cancer when he was very young. He had a rare form of brain cancer, but he's a fighter and got through it and he is now 12 years cancer free. That's awesome, Jack. My family started the I Know Jack Foundation in 2015 and started to make these I Know Jack packs for cancer patients to help them get through the fight. We give them to many hospitals in our area and to many loved ones we know that have cancer. As a part of the Demolitia, I'm happy to spread the love from here in Iowa to all of your family down in Texas. I really hope that your brother Mark gets through this fight and lives long to tell his story. I know it's hard watching your brother go through something like that, and you almost have to be as strong as them and be with him every step of the way. Much love and prayers from the Hogers. Ben, you the man, buddy. They got little things like sunscreen, hand sanitizer, lotion, some candy, little things like that. Got a water bottle, t-shirt, blanket. This is where I was like, this doesn't make sense for survival. Pill organizer, I was like, why would I need this in the wilderness? Some books, some pencil, pens, markers, journal, bags of rice or corn kernels. You heat them up and then they keep you warm in case your toes are cold. Some books, some things to do. Just a really cool, really thoughtful thing to send for my brother. So Ben, Thank you, you're awesome, super awesome gift to send me. I'm actually going to see my brother right now, uh, and I don't know if he's gonna wanna be on camera. I'm gonna let him be on camera if he wants to, but I also don't wanna pressure him. I asked him for the last few days if he wanted to come work on this with me. This is something my brother loves doing more than anything, and he didn't wanna do it. He just has been feeling really bad, his headaches are getting really bad, and so he just said, no, I just feel too bad. I'm just gonna stay in bed. He's like, I can't do anything. And so making, like go-karts for one thing are my brother's thing, and then building some ridiculous contraption, that's like right up his alley, and he said no, which means my brother's feeling really bad. So hopefully bringing him this will help put a smile on his face. So I appreciate that, Ben. Mark didn't feel good, but he really appreciated the backpack. You the man. Night, Lincoln. Lincoln, every night. He's scared of thunder. Well, he used to be, now he's not really, but he every night. Love you. Yeah, sleep good, okay? Perfect. Camera's at number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mayor.